Welcome back guys to episode 89 in my weekly countdown series. Last episode we had the top 10 most useless vehicles in GT Online and today we're going to be going throwback style into 10 reasons why GTA 4 was actually better than GTA 5. So in this video I'm going to be highlighting 10 things that I believe were pretty awesome in GTA 4 that were either completely removed or kind of dumbed down into GTA 5 for some reason. So if you do enjoy this video please leave a like and subscribe and let's get right into this. So first up in this list it just has to be combat. Now in GTA 5 combat is very simple, you can do a super simple dodge maneuver or when you punch you kind of throw a big haymaker punch a lot of the time and most of the time as well it only takes one hit to knock people out so there's not really much of a fist fight involved or much melee involved in GTA 5 at all and I think there's basically only about three different moves you can actually do and it's the same animation every time. Whereas if we take a look back to combat in GTA 4, combat is much more in depth and as someone who's trained martial arts for about 6 years, I really appreciate the combat we had in GTA 4. You know, Nico Bellic was quite clearly trained in martial arts. You can kind of throw jabs, you can throw crosses, knees, low kicks, roundhouse kicks, spinning heel kicks, elbows and even a lethal headbutt. A user known as Mnemonic Lee on GTA forums also actually posted a great guide to the GTA for combat system for all the different combinations and as you can see from this list the combat system is just way more intricate than the GTA 5 system. GTA 4 also had an area where you could cage fight and you could actually become a cage fighting champion and this was actually a very hard challenge if any of you guys watching this have done this achievement in GTA 4 it's actually very challenging. I think this one actually took me quite a few hours to complete. And yeah, I don't think an area like this would even be possible in GTA 5 with the way combat actually is. Next up is character physics. Now believe it or not, GTA 4 physics were actually more advanced in many ways than the physics we have in GTA 5. So let me explain. If we take a quick comparison to the NPC ragdoll physics, you can quickly see the GTA 4 was quite ahead of its time. Just we'll watch the way the bodies kind of fall down the stairs, the way the bodies move when you run into them with a car, the way they kind of brace for it. And this is actually a really good example of this when you look at pedestrian physics. So NPCs will actually react to where you shoot them. For example, if you shoot them in the foot or the leg, they'll actually drop to the floor in GTA 4 and kind of react to exactly where you shot them. Whereas in GTA 5, if you shoot someone in the leg once, they'll actually die. <laughs> it's a really weird thing. As you can see in GTA 5, it's just a really pathetic death when you shoot someone in the foot and they just die in that game. In GTA 4, you can also actually disarm people by shooting the guns out of their hands and when you're up against the SWAT teams, you can also shoot the SMGs or even assault rifles out of their hands which will drop to the floor and they'll pull out a pistol instead. Another small detail in GTA 4 was the fact that bodies when they drop to the floor are actually solid objects. You can um, kind of walk over them and interact with the body, whereas in GTA 5, for some reason, you just walk right through the bodies, you know, your feet right, just sink right into the body. It's not actually such a physical object as they were in GTA 4. Next up are car physics. Now not only are the character physics more realistic in GTA 4, but the way the vehicles handled as well were actually much more realistic. So what I'm going to do to um, show this off is put a side-by-side -side comparison of the way the vehicles handle and move. And watch especially how the vehicle moves when you steer um, sharply from right to left. As you can see the car kind of um, bends much more into the movement of it rather than the, the kind of static way the car looks in GTA 5. If we take a look at car crashes, they're also much more accurate or I guess realistic in GTA 4. When you crash into a certain area of the car, it will react much more to that specific area than it does in GTA 5. I think GTA 5 definitely looks and feels much more arcadey when it comes to vehicle handling and physics in general. Another few small aspects um, to show off are the fact that when you're in GTA 5, when you drive past a wall and kind of scratch your car against it, it'll actually leave damage on the wall, whereas it doesn't in GTA 5. There's also the ground damage. When you fall in a vehicle, it'll actually do some damage to the ground, whether it's um, kind of grass or even the road. It's a lot more realistic in GTA 4 comparing it to GTA 5. Next up is actually a very small feature in GTA 4 and it's been almost 10 years since that was released so you might have forgot this feature actually existed but we actually were able to push people in with the press of a button, it was kind of like a, an aggressive push we could do to NPCs or to get things out of the way 
and you kind of use both of your hands to just shove someone and it was actually a really fun way to mess with NPCs or even other players. You could push them downstairs, push them off ledges and I think this feature really did go to show how good the ragdoll physics were in this game. Ledge grabs was also another very small feature that GTA 4 had and it's basically when you're climbing you kind of grab on and hold on to that ledge before you climb yourself up it and it was a great way to kind of grab onto that ledge and basically shimmy it along if you wanted to move along um, I guess horizontally before you want to pull yourself up. Whereas in GTA 5 we don't have this feature, it's a very small feature again but it does um, sort of bring some aspects into the parkour um, of the last game that I really did love and um, you know in GTA 5 when you grab onto a ledge your character will automatically pull himself up. This feature just seems to have been completely removed from the game. NPC reactions are also a lot different than they are in previous GTA games. For some reason standing next to a pedestrian in GTA 5 kind of triggers them. I'm not really sure why it was done in this way but just your mere presence in the area next to an NPC can just make them hostile. And although we have um, a kind of option whether to react positively or react negatively, just standing next to people per se will make them pull out their guns on you. You know, standing next to the police will give you a wanted level. And I've actually even tried just taking a selfie in the vicinity of a police officer and I ended up being killed for it. One thing I really did like about the police in GTA 4 was if you first of all got wanted by the police such as if you aimed your weapon at them, they won't actually shoot you straight away, the police will first of all try to disarm the situation. Whereas in GTA 5 if you do so much as just stand next to a police officer you will be shot to death for it. At the number 7 spot is the way you can interact with objects in GTA 4, so if you see any rocks on the ground or kind of bricks or even cans on the street you can actually pick them up and use them as throwable objects. So you can pick up these objects and kind of throw them at NPCs, you can cause a reaction. I think there's even a mission where you throw um, a brick through a window to smash some glass. And a lot of people don't actually know this one, but if you see an NPC smoking in GTA 4, you can bump into them, make them drop their cigarette, pick it up and even throw it at them. That's a great way to get them to stop smoking, I guess. I'm not sure why they removed this feature in GTA 5 because there's actually a lot of litter and trash lying around in GTA 5. You'll see it moving across the floor and being laid around in a lot of areas. However, there's no way to kind of interact with it or even pick it up. Now this is one I just had to include and that's the fact that GTA 4 had a story mode DLC. In fact, it had two single player DLCs. GTA 4 was released in 2008 and then in the next year, 2009, we had two single player expansions for the game just a year after its release. We had the Lost and Damned and also the Ballad of Gay Tony. We are now well into four years after the release of GTA 5 and we've had no sniff of what happened to that single player DLC that Rockstar promised. It's really clear that GTA Online has been a big priority of development time and it seems like the whole company is focusing on the online content over any kind of single player story DLC. And I actually played through GTA 4 just recently when it came backwards compatible. I've got to say, the, the Ballad of Gay Tony was my personal favourite um, story DLC. The cutscenes were just hilarious. My favourite character had to be Yusuf. I mean, everything about this character was just so funny. And I think he has to be one of my all-time favourite characters from the GTA series. And I hardly ever buy DLCs for games, but um, these ones were actually very worth your money. Now this one is actually quite a controversial point and it's the fact that we had one main protagonist, one main playable protagonist in GTA 4. Now I've heard a lot of people that they actually prefer having multiple characters like we had in GTA 5 and um, having three different playable characters. I guess some people have said it gives them an opportunity to give um, a different character to relate with since they all have different um, perspectives and personalities. However, in my opinion, it lacks depth. You know, the storyline in GTA 5 was split between three different characters, meaning we had less time to spend with these characters and develop these characters in the storyline. On the other hand, when you're playing as Nico Bellic in GTA 4, we got really invested into this character, we got really attached to this character. Since we're playing through him through the whole storyline, you know, we got to know a lot about Nico Bellic and his personal story. So let me know what you guys think in the comments about that. Do you agree with me that a, a single playable character is better or do you much prefer having a couple of playable characters? And the last point in this countdown is wanted levels. And in a nutshell, the way the police interact with you is just much better in GTA 4 in my opinion. 
There is actually a 6 star wanted level in GTA 4, whereas in GTA 5 it actually ends at 5 stars. And there's a, there was actually just a much greater range of law enforcement vehicles that would get sent after you in that game. And if you did manage to get up to 6 stars, you'll be up against you know, the FIB Buffaloes, you'll have Noose Enforcers, there was also um, Annihilator Helicopters that would come act after you. It would actually get pretty intense with those police chases. If I remember correctly, there was also sometimes police positioned at the top of rooftops with sniper rifles that will actually look for you when you're wanted. So that was my top 10 reasons why I believe GTA 4 was in many aspects better than GTA 5. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought of any of these points, or if, you, if I missed out any, if you have any other reasons to add, or even if you disagree with me and think that GTA 5 has a lot more reasons why it's better than GTA 4. Don't forget to leave the video a like if you did enjoy this, these do take quite a while to make and it really helps support this series, and of course, subscribe so you don't miss out on the next countdown, I do one of these every single week. Have yourselves a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one.